Zara slaps a stack of magazines down on the West Wing briefing room table. This is just what I saw on the way here this morning, she says. I don't think I need to remind you, I live two blocks away. The $75,000 stumble. Battle Royale. Oh, wait, no, not Royale. Battle Royal. Okay. Come to blows at Royal Wedding. Cake gate. I knew this was going to spark a war. I said that when I first started watching the movie. And lo and behold, I was correct. I predicted a war and I got one. All because of cake. Each one is accompanied by a photo of himself and Henry flat on their backs in a pile of cake. Henry's ridiculous suit all askew and covered in smashed buttercream flowers. His wrist pinned in Alex's hand, a thin slice of red across Henry's cheek. Are you sure we shouldn't be in the situation room for this kind of meeting, Alex attempts? Neither Zara nor his mother, sitting across the table, seems to find it funny. The president gives him a withering look over the top of her reading classes, and he clamps his mouth shut. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Mommy. I'm not even sure which one. Zara or Madam President. I don't, either one. Either one. Mommy, sorry. It's not exactly that he's afraid of Zara. Boy, who are you lying to right now? Just yourself. Who are you playing? Yourself. His mom's deputy chief of staff and right-hand woman, mommy. She has a spiky exterior. Oh, does she? But Alex swears there's something soft in there somewhere. God, I hope not. <laughs> and she is a woman. She is a strong, soft, thoughtful, sexy woman. They grew up made to talk about their feelings a lot, and then his mother became president. And life became less about feelings and more about international relations. He's not sure which option spells a worse fate. Sources inside the royal reception report, the two were seen arguing minutes before the cake catastrophe. Girl, you are not funny. You're a little funny. The sun. The sun is responsible for this. Damn. More like, more like, more like the, the sun, more, more like the, but royal family insider claimed the first son's feud with Henry has raged for years. Damn, they really got, they do have the insider scoop. A source tells the son that Henry and the first son have been at odds ever since the first meeting at the Rio Olympics, and the animosity has only grown. These days, they can't even be in the same room with each other. It seems it was only a matter of time before Alex took the American approach, a violent altercation. <laughs> I really don't think you can call tripping over a table a violent Alexander, Ellen says, her tone eerily calm. Oh, sorry. Alexander, shut up. He does. I want so badly for you to explain to me how this is funny. Alex opens his mouth and closes it a couple of times. He started it, he says finally. I barely touched him. He's the one who pushed me and I only grabbed him to try and catch my balance and sugar. Well, damn, I can't get away with that. Saying sugar, that's like being the kind of person that can get away with calling someone else like baby girl or something, or like baby doll, or like darling. I can't, I'm not, I'm not your soldier, sir. I cannot express to you how much the press does not give a fuck about who started what. Ooh, a swearing president. Okay, yeah, mommy. Boy. As your mother, I can appreciate that maybe this isn't your fault, but as the president, all I want it is to have the CIA fake your death and ride the dead kid's sympathy into a second term. Madam President, I don't... Hmm. I don't know about that. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I understand, but I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about all of that. Ooh. Uh, I'm, I'm retracting the mommy for now just because, like... I mean, mommy is harmful wait no she's not mommy is like you know she's strict she is very clear upon what she wants but mommy is not like openly threatening her son i don't think <laughs> i mean not not my mommy <laughs> you she says are going to make nice with henry you're leaving Saturday and spending Sunday in England. I have about 500 meetings right now. She gets up and heads for the door, stopping to kiss her hand and press it to the top of his head. You're a dumbass. Love you. <laughs> Look, Zara says, taking a drag for her massive stainless steel thermos of a coffee. Both sides need to come. That's what she said. <laughs> 
Both sides need to come out of this looking good. And the only way to do that is to make it look like your little slap fight at the wedding with some homoerotic... homoerotic frat bro mishap okay so you can hate the heir to the throne all you want write mean poems about him in your diary but the minute you see a camera you act like the sun shines out of his dick and you make it convincing oh my god zara oh my god i mean the sun does shine out of his dick it really does. I've heard that about His Royal Highness. And you know what? Alex is about to suffer from some sunstroke. How am I supposed to do that? He has a personality of a cabbage. <laughs> Are you really not understanding how much I do not care at all how you feel about this? Zara says. This is what's happening so your stupid ass doesn't distract the entire country from your mother's re-election campaign. Do you want her to have to get up on the debate stage next year and explain to the world why her son is trying to destabilize America's European relationships. With a cake, though. With a cake toppling, like, it's about destabilizing America's European relationships. Because a cake fell on them? They're making such a big thing out of nothing. I mean, I'm here for it. Because obviously this is going to lead to them eating other types of cakes. <laughs> If somebody asks about him, I want to hear you gush like he's your fucking prom date. They, like, Zara is the one pushing them to be in love. Pushing them together, saying all sorts of shit about, you know, the sunshine coming out of Henry's dick. You're going to memorize this. So if anybody tries to catch you in a lie, you know what to say. Under hobbies, it lists polo and competitive yachting. Alex is going to set himself on fire. Minimum two social media posts per day highlighting England visit thereof. One on-air interview with ITV this morning, lasting five minutes in accordance with determined narrative. Two joint appearance with photographers present. One private meeting, one public charity appearance. Alex pinches the bridge of his nose where a stress headache is already percolating. I have class. Do you mean class or like class? He meant class, like class, like class, you know? When he was a kid, he used to hide pages and pages of loose leafed paper covered in messy, loopy handwriting under the worn denim cushion of the window seat in the house in Austin. Rambling treaties on the role of government in America with all the G's written backwards, paragraphs translated from English to Spanish, tables of his elementary school classmates' strengths and weaknesses, and lists, lots of lists. The lists helps. The lists is a pels. Reason this is a good idea. One, his mother needs good press. Two, having a shitty record in foreign relations definitely won't help his career. Three, free trip to Europe. Okay, he says, taking the file. I'll do it, but it won't have any fun. Doing a whole list stuff, I mean, it's not a pros and cons list, but it's still kind of a list. It's very Libra behavior, I just want to say. I'm not sure what they are yet, and I don't mean to box them into any type of stereotype. Well, at the same time, that's exactly what I'm doing. The White House trio is, officially, the nickname for Alex, June, and Nora, coined by people shortly after the inauguration. In actuality, it was carefully tested with focus groups by the White House press team and fed directly to people. Politics calculating even in hashtags that is petrifying but also very real of them honestly before the claremonts the kennedys and clintons shielded the first offspring from the press giving them the privacy to go through awkward phases and organic childhood experiences and everything else sasha and malia were hounded and picked apart by the press before they were out of high school the white house trio got ahead of the narrative before anyone could do the same ah uh? it was a bold new plan Three attractive, bright, charismatic, marketable millennials. Alex and Nora are, technically, just past the Gen Z threshold. But the press doesn't find that nearly as catchy. So you got ahead of being picked apart by the press by just straight up being attractive? In the music room on the third floor of the residence, they're just Alex and June and Nora. Naturally glued together since they were teenagers, stunting their growth with the espresso in the primaries. Alex pushes them. June steadies them. Nora keeps them honest. I like that. It's like baby spice, sporty spice, um, scary spice, you know? June and Nora are ignoring him, caught in a bubble of intimacy he can never quite penetrate. Their relationship is something enormous and incomprehensible to most people, including Alex on occasion. 
He knows them both down to their split ends and nasty habits, but there's a strange girl bond between them he can't and knows he isn't supposed to translate. I thought you were liking the WAPO gig, Nora says. With a dull pop, she pulls the cork out of the wine and takes a swig directly from the bottle. That's my girl. I was, Jean says. I mean, I am, but it's not much of a gig. It's like one op-ed a month and... Half my pitches get shot down for being too close to mom's platform. They wouldn't put you on a beat? Nora asks. Are you kidding? They wouldn't even let me in the building, June says. She puts the record on and sets the needle. June walks over and places her palm on the top of Nora's head, deeper in her nest of curls, and leans down to kiss the back of her own fingers. I'll figure something out. Sorry, I was doing the, is this gay squint. I'm not sure, to be honest, but I am not opposed. I mean, clearly, two girls kind of like having a deep, intimate connection and relationship, and they're like supportive of one another. Why wouldn't I be on board with that? Why wouldn't I? I can't believe I have to learn this garbage, Alex says. I just finished midterms. Look. You're the one who has to fight everything that moves, June says, waving her mouth on the back of her hand, a move she'd only do in front of the two of them. Anyway, he was totally fine when I danced with him. I don't get why you hate him so much. I think it's amazing, Nora says. Sworn enemies forced to make peace to settle tensions between their countries. There's something totally Shakespearean about it. Oh, that was in Halix's, Halix's head, head uh, thing about romance. Nora's inside his head. Love to see it. The sheet is filled with things Alex already knew, either from the royal siblings as dominating the new cycle or hate reading Henry's Wikipedia page. (laughs) Damn, okay. So you don't have to study it because you kind of already know all this stuff, which is interesting. Favorite book? Uh, Alex says, Ah, fuck. Uh, what's, uh, what's the one? June peers down at the list. This says, Great Expectations? Oh, Henry's a born romantique, it seems. Romantiste. This dude is reading Charles Dickens for pleasure. Guys, it's kind of nice. I mean, it's pretentious, but the themes of great expectations are all like, love is more important than status and doing what's right beats money and power. Maybe he relates. Alex makes a long, loud fart noise. Well, that's not a fart noise. I was trying to... Okay, I would... Okay, never mind. I tried. Hey, what do you think Zara put on my fact sheet? Mm, Nora says, sucking her teeth. (sniffs) Favorite summer Olympic sport? Rhythmic gymnastics. I'm not ashamed of that. Favorite brand of khakis? Gap. Listen, they look best on my ass. The J Crew ones wrinkle all weird. And they're not khakis, they're chinos. Khakis are for white people. (laughs) Alex expects Henry's handler to be some stout storybook Englishman with tails and a top hat, probably a walrus mustache, definitely scurrying to place a velvet footstool at Henry's carriage door. The person who awaits him and his security team on the tarmac is very much not that. He's a tall 30-something Indian man in an impeccably tailored suit, ruggishly handsome with a neatly trimmed beard, a steaming cup of tea, and a shiny Union Jack on his lapel. Zara has a type, And she says it loudly. Mr. Claremont Diaz, he says. Welcome back to England. Sean Srivastava, Prince Henry's equerry. He pulls a small tablet from his jacket and pivots on his heel toward the waiting car. Alex stares at his back, speechless before hastily refusing to be impressed by a grown man whose job is handling the prince's schedule. Schedule. No matter how cool he is or how long and smooth his strides are, He shakes his head a little and jogs to catch up, sliding into the back seat as Sean checks the mirror. Right, Sean says. You'll be staying in the guest quarters at Kensington Palace. Tomorrow, you'll do the This Morning interview at 9. We've arranged for a photo call at the studio, then it's children with cancer all afternoon, and off you go back to the land of the free. For now, you're to come with me to chauffeur the prince from the stables. One of our photographers will be there to photograph the prince, welcoming you to the country, so do try to look pleased to be here. Non-disclosure agreement, the top of the first page reads. Alex flips through the last page. There are at least 15 pages of text, and a low whistle escapes his lips. I can't do a whistle. I can edit one in. (laughs) 
That'll do. The reputation of the royal family is too valuable to risk. The words confidential information as used in this agreement shall include the following. Number one, such information as His Royal Highness Prince Henry or any member of the royal family may designate to the guest as confidential information. Number two, all proprietary and financial information regarding His Royal Highness Prince Henry's personal wealth and estate. Any interior architectural details of royal residences, including Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, etc., and personal effects found therein. Number four, any information regarding or involving His Royal Highness Prince Henry's personal or private life not previously released by official royal documents, speeches, or approved biographers, including any personal or private relationship the guest may have with His Royal Highness Prince Henry. <gasps> Number five, any information found on His Royal Highness Prince Henry's personal electronic devices. This seems excessive. He wonders what the most mind-numbingly wholesome public figure on earth could possibly have to hide. He hopes it's not people hunting. I, I mean, it could be. You'd be perfect prey for that. The royal stables are, of course, elaborate and well-kept, and about a million miles from the old ranches he'd seen out in the Texas panhandle. Alex rests his elbow in the lacquered white fence boards, fighting back the sudden, absurd feeling he's undressed, undressed, underdressed for this. Oh my god. <laughs> my mind is working at like 10 steps ahead and faster than my brain and where the story is actually at. And like, I need, I need you to chill right now. On any other day, his chinos and button down would be fine for a casual photo op, but for the first time in a long time, he's feeling distinctly out of his element. It's not like Henry is going to look much better after a polo practice. He'll probably be sweaty and disgusting. <laughs> As if on cue, Henry comes galloping around the bend on the back of a pristine white horse. My guy Henry really showed up to the playing field on a white horse. Like in the movie, the way that he shows up to this part of their lives is through a vintage old, like, I don't know, cars, but it seems to have been a really cool fucking car and it should have been like a badass entrance or whatever. But coming into the scene on a white horse is a whole other level of like prince it's a whole other dimension of like you walk in you enter on a white horse the fuck do you think you well his royal highness the fuck do you think you are the prince a literal prince okay he's definitely not sweaty or disgusting he is instead bathed dramatically i don't know what kind of filter alex has on like on every time he looks at Henry, but it's definitely like, it's an expensive paid VIP filter. You know what I mean? Like he's seeing this guy through rainbow colored glasses. He is instead bathed dramatically in a sweeping and resplendent sunset, wearing a crisp black jacket and riding pants tucked into tall leather boots, looking every inch an actual fairy tale prince. That's what I'm saying. He unhooks his helmet and takes it off with one gloved hand, and his hair underneath is just attractively tousled enough to look like it's supposed to be that way. I'm going to throw up on you, Alex says, as soon as Henry is close enough to hear it. Alex really resents the extra few feet of height Henry has on him. And you know what? It, for my sake, because I am picturing the actors in the movie, I'm going to take away that height difference in my mind. There are probably going to be so many nice jokes in here about it because that's just <laughs> how men are about their height. But you look sober. <laughs> Only for you, your royal highness, he says with an elaborate mock bow. This is idiotic, Alex says, grasping Henry's hand. The skin is soft, probably exfoliated and moisturized daily by some royal manicurist. There's a royal photographer right on the other side of the fence, so he smiles winningly and says through his teeth, let's get this over with. <laughs> la, 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 la. He chomps on his butt. That's not what it says here. <laughs> the camera snaps nearby. His eyes are big and soft and blue, and he desperately needs to be punched in one of them. Your country could probably arrange that. Alex throws his head back and laughs handsomely, loud and false. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. There's something vaguely familiar about the Kensington Palace guest quarters, even though he's never been here before. Many of the rooms in the White House have a similar hauntedness, a sense of history that hangs like cobwebs no matter how pristine the rooms are kept. He's used to sleeping alongside ghosts, but that's not it. I think that might be it. I think it's because like a lot of evil things maybe happened in that place. And so you're getting 
the hebeest of jeebies, Alex. And I know that might be difficult to sense because right now, you know, so much of what you're feeling is like, romantic gayness for the prince i mean if there's anything that can distract me from staying in a haunted palace it would be wanting to write it strikes farther back in his memory around the time his parents split up they were the kind of married lawyer couple who could barely order chinese takeout without legally binding documents so alex spent the summer before seventh grade shuttled back and forth from home to their dad's new place outside of los angeles it was a nice house in the valley he never slept well there he'd sneak out of his thrown together bedroom in the middle of the night stealing helados from his dad's freezer and standing barefoot in the kitchen eating straight from the court that's how it feels here somehow wide awake at midnight in a strange place duty bound to make it work he wanders into the kitchen attached to his guest wing where the ceilings are high and the countertops are shiny marble he was allowed to submit a list to stock the kitchen but apparently it was too hard to get helados on short notice what is that helado comida helada Leche helada. It's the middle ground between Italian gelato and American ice cream. Gelato is typically made with whole milk and eggs and not whipped. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Sounds delicious, honestly. I'd have some helado any day. What's it like? Nora's voice says, tiny over his phone speaker on the screen. Her hair is up and she's poking at one of her dozens of window plants. Oh, this is the deleted scene in the movie. And instead, they put Corneto in it. Was that an ad? It felt like an ad. It probably is. I mean, I don't know. Weird, Alex says, pushing his glasses up his nose. Everything looks like a museum. I don't think I'm allowed to show you, though. Alex starts to laugh, but cuts off when he hears rustling down the hall. Quiet footsteps approaching. Hold on, Alex says, covering the speaker. A light flicks on in the hallway, and the person who comes padding into the kitchen is none other. Then Prince Henry. He's rumpled and half awake, shoulder slumping as he yawns. He's standing in front of Alex wearing not a suit, but a heavy heather gray t-shirt and plaid pajama bottoms. He has earbuds in and his hair is a mess. His feet are bare. Like, how is this guy like not... I mean, if this were real in any which way, that would be a half-naked guy running around the palace and you know it you know it he freezes when his eyes fall on alex perched on the countertop alex stares back at him and his hand nora begins a muffled is that before alex disconnects the call henry pulls out his earbuds and his posture has ratcheted back up straight and his face is still blurry and confused hello he says hoarse oh. Ah, something about a raspy, vocal fried voice, man. I don't know. I'm a basic bitch. Like, stuff like that gets to me. Whatever. He crosses to the freezer and extracts the box of ice cream cones, showing Alex the name Cornetto across the front. Do you raid the kitchens of all your guests? Alex asks. Only when I can't sleep, Henry says. He looks at Alex, deferring, and Alex realizes he's waiting for permission to open the box and take one. Alex thinks about telling him no, just for the thrill of denying a prince something. But he's kind of intrigued. He usually can't sleep either. He nods. Have you practiced what you'll say tomorrow? Yes, Alex says, bristling immediately. You're not the only professional here. I only meant, do you think we should uh, rehearse? Rehearse? Oh my god, like role play? What the fuck? Alex hops down off the counter, swiping his phone unlocked. Watch this. He lines up a shot. The box of Cornetto's on the counter, Henry's hand braced on the marble next to it. He opens up Instagram, slaps a filter on it. Nothing cures jet lag, Alex narrates in a monotone as he taps out a caption, like midnight ice cream with at Prince Henry. He holds the phone for Henry to see as likes and comments immediately pour in. Are you done? Alex asks. I was on a call. Henry blinks and folds his arms over his chest. Back on the defensive. Of course, I won't keep you. This sucks. Because Henry was actually kind of being nice, though. I mean, it would have been cute, but Alex is being all bitchy. As he leaves the kitchen, he pauses in the doorframe, considering. I didn't know you wore glasses. Oh, no! <laughs> My God, that got to me. I feel it all over my body, dude. I didn't know you wore glasses, he says finally. He leaves Alex standing there, alone in the kitchen, the box of Cornetto sweating on the counter. That is insane. Because <laughs> I was just like reading and I was like feeling it. It was it was a lovely little scene of them like 
being kind of nice and decent and human with each other. Also because like it's such a secretive time of the day. No one's up. They're in Kensington Palace. They're in a place where Henry is familiar with, so he's a lot more comfortable. He's roaming around, sleepless, in his pajamas. He's looking, for the first time at least, in Alex's perspective, and honestly, even in our perspective, a little less prince-like and a little more like human-like. Like we're seeing, you know, a side to him that feels more normal, more like, oh, that's a guy that I would see in the airport and have a crush on. When he commented on the glasses, I was just like, oh yeah, I forgot he was wearing his glasses too. And it brought me back to the beginning of the scene, to the beginning of like Henry walking into the kitchen in the first place. I love it when stuff does that. When it's like, at the end, it'll add this little note that changes the scene entirely. And so you kind of go back to it and... Now it reads differently. Oh, my nose is running. I'm feeling things. That's when you know. If I have like a runny nose during the the thing that I'm experiencing, that means that it's a full body shudder. (laughs) It's a full body like up and down the spine, all over the shoulders. Like I'm dying a little bit inside and I kind of like it. (laughs) The ride to the studio for the interview is bumpy, but mercifully quick. Alex should probably blame some of his queasiness on nerves, but chooses to blame it all in this morning's appalling breakfast spread. What kind of garbage country eats bland beans on white toast for breakfast? He can't decide if his Mexican blood or his Texan blood is more offended. I can imagine that. Sean shakes a yellow pill out of a bottle and passes it back to Henry, who readily pops it into his mouth and swallows it dry. Probably like anxiety pills? I'm guessing. Man's sounds like, you know... He's been having panic attacks before he can walk. I guess that's what the NDA is for as well. Is like, you know, the prince is on medication. (laughs) Prince goes first, then you, Sean says to Alex, leaning in and touching his earpiece. Henry clears his throat and unfolds himself, stepping out into the morning and waving genially at the crowd. Cameras flash, photographers shout. A blue-haired girl in the crowd lifts up a homemade poster that reads in big glittery letters, Get in me, Prince Henry. For the first five seconds until a member of the security team shoves it into a nearby trash can. Stop! Uh, She didn't sign no NDA. She can ask the prince to get inside her. Act like you like me, Alex says cheerfully. Henry looks at him like he's trying to choose between a million choice words before tipping his head to the side and offering up a well-rehearsed laugh, putting his arm around Alex too. The hosts of this morning are agonizingly British. A middle-aged woman named Dottie in a tea dress and a man called Stu who looks as if he spends weekends yelling at mice in his garden. (laughs) Soon Henry is leading the way out with Alex close behind. Alex shakes Dottie's hand first, smiling his politic smile at her, the one that makes a lot of congresswomen, and more than a few congressmen, want to tell him things they shouldn't. Henry sits on the prop couch next to him, perfect posture, and Alex smiles at him, making a show of looking comfortable in Henry's company. Henry is annoyingly attractive. That's always been a thing, objectively. It's fine. He realizes, almost a second too late, that Dottie is asking him a question. What do you think of jolly old England then, Alex? You know, Dottie, it's gorgeous. I've been here a few times since my mom got elected, and it's always incredible to see the history here and the beer selection. And of course, it's always great to see this guy. (laughs) He turns to Henry, extending his fist. Henry hesitates before stiffly bumping his own knuckles against Alex's with a heavy air of an act of treason. Alex's whole reason for wanting to go into politics when he knows so many past presidential sons and daughters have run away screaming the minute they turned 18 is he genuinely cares about people. The power is great, the attention is fun, but the people... The people are everything. He has a bit of a caring too much problem about most things, including whether people can pay their medical bills or marry whomever they love or not get a shot at school. Or in this case, if kids with cancer have enough books to read at the Royal Marsden NHS Foundation Trust. He doesn't realize he's lost track of Henry until the patient he's visiting dozes off, and he recognizes the low rumble of Henry's voice on the other side of the curtain. It's almost as if Henry is actually a good person that's kind of crazy huh henry is talking to a little girl with leukemia named claudette according to the board on her wall she's got dark skin that's turned sort of a pale gray and a bright orange scarf tied around her head emblazoned with the alliance starbird henry is kneeling at her side smiling and holding her hand star wars fan are you 
Henry says in a low, warm voice. Alex has never heard from him before, pointing at the insignia on her headscarf. I'd like to be just like Princess Leia when I'm older because she's so tough and smart and strong and she gets to kiss Han Solo. I always liked Luke. He's brave and good, and he's the strongest Jedi of them all. I think Luke is proof that it doesn't matter where you come from or who your family is. You can always be great if you're true to yourself. I'm impressed, Alex says as they walk out into the hallway together. Henry cocks an eyebrow, and Alex adds, Not impressed, just surprised that you actually have, you know, feelings. Henry is beginning to smile when three things happen in rapid succession. The first, a shout echoes from the opposite end of the hall. The second, there's a loud pop that sounds alarmingly like gunfire. The third, Cash grabs both Henry and Alex by the arms and shoves them through the nearest door. Alex stumbles over a mop and one of Henry's legs, and they go crashing down together in a clattering pile of tin bedpans. Oh god, Henry says, muffled and echoing slightly. Henry lets out a muffled yelp, and the next thing Alex knows, he's been yanked sideways by his shirt, and Henry is halfway on top of him, pinning him down with one thigh. His head throbs, where he's clocked it against the linoleum floor, but he can feel his lips split into a smile. So you do have some fight in you, Alex says. He bucks his hips, trying to shake Henry off. Oh, okay, yeah, that's how you shake off someone that's on top of you and pinning you down with their thigh. You buck up your hip. Yeah, of course, that makes perfect sense. This isn't gay at all. Are you quite finished, Henry says, sounding strangled. Oh, you do care, Alex says. I'm learning all your hidden depths today, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. I cannot believe even mortal peril will not prevent you from being the way that you are. I know, it's very Wei Wushan of him. Wei Wushan! Alex crosses his arms, recognizes it as a mirror to Henry's tick, and uncrosses them. Oh, you're already mirroring each other. This is perfect. Like, you're, you're barely two chapters in, but okay. Do you really not remember being a prick to me at the Olympics? I walked up to you to introduce myself. And you stared at me like I was the most offensive thing you had ever seen. Right after you shook my hand, you turned to Sean and said, can you get rid of him? I didn't realize you heard that. I feel like you're missing the point, Alex says, which is that it's a douchey thing to say either way. And as he's on the floor of a supply closet, waiting out a security threat with the Prince of England at the end of a weekend that has finally felt like some very specific ongoing nightmare, censoring himself takes too much effort. Doing what we do is fucking hard, but it's harder for me. I'm the son of the first female president, and I'm not white like she is. I can't even pass for it. People will always come down harder on me. And you're, you know, you. And you were born into all of this, and everyone thinks your prince fucking charming. You're you're basically a living reminder that I will always be compared to someone else no matter what I do, even if I work twice as hard. That's pretty interesting. There was a mention of it where, oh shit, sorry, I hit, I hit your dick there. I like this better, this version in the book where he just flat out says it at the beginning of their friendship and it becomes sort of a sort of like a turning point for the both of them and it also explains so much about why he actually doesn't like being compared to prince henry i'm constantly being compared to a person that's not even putting in as much effort as i am and also is white henry does actually not want any of it but he's born into it so he doesn't have a choice whereas alex wants all of it but he feels like he has to work two times as hard. I mean, in the movie too, it wasn't like this was never explored, but for some reason it hits harder in the book this way. I can't very well do much about the rest, but I can tell you I was, in fact, a prick that day. Not that it's any excuse, but my father had died 14 months before and I was still kind of a prick every day of my life at the time. The cancer ward, of course. Henry chose a cancer ward. It was right there on the fact sheet, father, Famed film star Arthur Fox, deceased 2015, pancreatic cancer. He goes back over the last 24 hours in his head. The sleeplessness, the pills, the tense little grimace Henry does in public that Alex has always read as aloofness. I'm only saying I like the resolution of Jedi. It ties everything up nicely. And the overall theme you're intended to take away from the film is hope and love and, you know, all that which is what Jedi leaves you with a sense 
of most of all. Henry is so soft, bro. I feel so bad for all of this shit that like Alex thought about him and called him. Like, I cannot believe you bullied him mentally so much and bullied him outwardly too, but like, God damn, Henry is the softest little, oh, must protect at all costs. He's so cute. Outside Kensington Palace, Alex takes Henry's phone out of his hand and swiftly opens a blank contact page before he can protest or stick a PPO on him for violating royal property. That's my number. If we're going to keep this up, it's going to get annoying to keep going through handlers. So just text me. We'll figure it out. And Alex wonders how this guy has a new friends. Does he have friends? I do wonder. No booty calls, Alex tells him. And Henry chokes on a laugh because he fully intends to give him a call of the booty variety. I love Henry. <laughs> He's so precious. I don't know yet because I haven't read a lot of Henry just yet, but he does seem to be kind of like softer than he was in the movie. And I don't know which one I prefer. I don't even know if I have a preference to be honest, but like book Henry is, oh, I just want to protect him from everything. Even Alex sometimes, because good God, man, like chill out. Wise words for today. Um, Listen, go to bed. Sleep is much more valuable than you realize. Actually, no, sleep is as valuable as you realize it to be. And that's why you should take more advantage of it. And that's it. See you in your dreams. <sighs>